Hello everyone, this is the Prussian Prince uh, with another Total War Attila tournament match cast. This is the Agartha Flash tournament number one final uh, between uh, Panda Warrior of Agony and Orgetorix of Agartha. So this one is going to be a fairly interesting game. A match rather. Well, game two I suppose. Um, because both of these players are extremely good. I would argue that Panda Warrior is the best Total War Attila player at this moment. I don't think anyone can uh, disagree with that, but uh, let's go ahead into this game and see what they're both going to do. So we have for uh, for Panda Warrior, we have uh, the Eastern Romans and for uh, for um, Orgetorix, we have the Huns. I'm going to go over the build of the Eastern Romans first. Let's see. Palatina Guards General with Brace. Then we have, let's see, a bunch of Skolek Palatina. It looks like four Skolek Palatina and two Klibonari. The Klibonari both have bronze one upgrades. We also have another Skirmish Cav unit. Well, not another, just one Skirmish Cav unit, the Equites Sagittari. Up front, we have, let's see, two Sagittari supported by two Funditores. Uh, then we see, let's see, two Heiterea Guards on each flank, it seems, and in the center, we have two Protectores Domestici. Protectores Domestici, obviously cool uh, cool units, very tanky, whereas the Heiterea do the damage. Now, uh, let's see the Hunnic uh, build. So we have the Step Warlord uh, General for the Huns here. Then we have, let's see, two Noble Step Cataphracts, Bronze 1. Make that 4 as we have two more on the left, uh, Bronze 1 as well. Uh, then in terms of uh, the rest of the cavalry force, well, I don't see any anything else, honestly. So it's just four heavy cav, well, and then step cataphract over here, bronze one, with the bronze one step warlord, but nothing else, no actual skirmish cav uh, brought here. So let's see. Up front we have the four step bows, which is pretty normal to bring step bows as the hunts, I mean, why not? Then we have, let's see, wow, four boss friend infantry in the center, interesting. And then two war warriors on each flank, so a total of eight infantry. Hmm, I kind of like this. It's it's very, very strong, this composition. Good infantry, I mean, strong, a decent center. I mean, look at the armor and health of these guys. 62 armor and 149 health, and they are very heavy. So, very, very cool units. On top of that, they even have Encourage. So, they're going to hold extremely long, these guys. And, I mean, it's just... They even have, have missiles. So, if you charge the center with cavalry, like, prepare to lose a lot of men uh, to to these boss for an infantry because of the javelins and such. So, here we see one uh, uh, switch up from these between these two players. Uh, one uh, change. So, we, he we have the Hunts here. Not in loose formation, whereas the Eastern Romans are in loose formation with all their skirmishers. I mean, people argue that some people argue that loose formation is better. Some pe others argue that uh, not using loose formation is better. I mean, I suppose it's situational. I mean, if you want to take that more damage, you go loose formation. If you want to deal more damage, you go tight formation. Essentially, I mean, if you want to take less damage, but by taking more damage, I mean by uh, I mean absorbing more arrows. That's what I mean. Essentially, like you waste more of your opponent's uh, missiles if you are in loose formation. So anyway, um, have the Funditores marching up here as well as the Sagittari. Sagittari are in uh, formation first though. So as you can see here, I mean, this is just not, nothing really is going to happen here. Uh, not really. But at the moment, we can see the Steppos are, uh, and they're losing a decent chunk of men, as are the Funditores and Sagittari, so it's pretty even. Uh, these Noble Step Cataphracts, actually, I don't know what they were doing. They actually threw their uh, Javelins and got zero kills. So this was not a good move by the Huns here. That, but that was a uh, nice bait, I suppose. So maybe it wasn't on purpose. Well, I don't know. I guess it wasn't on purpose. but. This is a waste of uh, the jabs on the Noble Step Cataphracts. Could could come into play in the late game or so. But yeah, let's hit fast forward a bit because as you can see, nothing happening over here. Equitas Sagittari, they maybe should just go around and see if they can uh, snipe some of these Noble Step Cataphracts or ores. Would be a good idea. So here we have the Sagittari 
actually doing fine against the step bows. Now these Fundatores should waver soon, but yeah, as overall you can see that the Eastern Romans are winning the skirmish engagement here. Uh, these Fundatores probably going to be targeting the, the cataphracts. Okay, I guess not. So they're both just going to be trading away their skirmishers and not gaining anything here. But actually, right now the Eastern Romans, what they can do is they cannot use their missiles at all, and then they can just. Uh, okay, very nice charge here with the Scully Palatina. They're gonna get hit though by the javelins and lose two men. He doesn't. He does shatter that step bow, so it wasn't too horrible, but still he lost. Ooh, he loses another Scully Palatina thanks to these noble step cataphracts throwing their javelins. Not javelins actually. They have a bow, don't they? Yeah, they have a bow that they can use. They've gotten two kills, huh? Not insane. So yeah, right now I guess you can say that the skirmish engagement was won by the Eastern Romans, but. So few men left and such little ammo that it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, like, oh, this li this little amount of ammo is not going to do much. So here's Koli Palatina going to get into the step bows and then should pull immediately away from here. That is definitely the case. Just charge in and pull out of the step bows. Use these Fundatorius to block the charge and then go in probably. Perhaps, yeah, maybe he'll do that. Okay, looks like no. So it looks like these step bows going to pull out from this engagement now. Oh, they're gonna go in again, so so do the Scully Palatina, I guess. I don't know why the, these units are... Uh, are they getting targeted? No, I don't think so. Okay, so here's the engagement. Uh, looks like the Scully Palatina actually do receive a charge, so they lose a couple of men here because of the Noble Step Cataphracts. Uh, so yeah, the Scully Palatina, oh, they're gonna go back into the archers. Uh, this is a bit risky because the Cataphracts are so close. Looks like they're gonna get a charge in and just pull out so quickly out of there. Without losing a single man, uh, but again the skirmish engagement not really much happening. Uh, looks like the Klebanari are going to do a very nice job here against the Step Cataphracts. Step Cataphracts did not get a charge off, uh, so that engagement was managed nicely by the Eastern Romans. But here, oh, the Scholar Palatina going to get charged by these um, the Step Cataphracts. Ooh, I don't know why the Step Cataphracts did not go into the Hetereas, but it looks like now they will. Ooh, the Hater Reyes could get charged here, so yes, the Step Cataphracts will get kind of like chipped off at the flank, but they're still gonna get a very nice rear charge into these Hater Reyes. Now, as you can see here, Scully Palatina just dying very quickly to the Noble Step Cataphracts. We did not see the Scully Palatina using Diamond, so that was a huge problem as well. And these Klebanari, I mean, yeah, very nice charge on the Noble Step Cataphracts, but now the Ors are in there, so that's not good. Step Cataphracts here killing off the Hetorea Guard. Very, very cost efficient engagement there for the Hunts. More Hetoreas here, but I mean, this Hetorea is also going to get caught by another, another Noble Step Cataphract charge. So it's just not going to look good at all for the Eastern Romans. These Hetoreas, both of them getting charged. And this, at this point, is just basically. I would almost say that this game is over at this point. Because losing both Hetoreas like that and losing the cavalry on the flanks without doing much. Not much worse that could happen at this point, honestly. <laughs> uh, not much worse it can get, so it looks like the Step Cataphract is finally going to die, but not after it destroys the Hatorea. Uh, not before it destroys the Hatorea, I mean. These wars here will do fairly well against Hatoreas. Nice charge by the Scully Palatina, it's gonna do some damage, but I mean now we have the Noble Step Cataphracts going for another charge onto these Hatoreas. These Hatoreas are gone. And now we see another Cataphract charge. These Noble Step Cataphracts are going to do significant damage. Looks like these Noble Step Cataphracts destroy the Protectoris Domestici. Uh, without the Prote Protectoris Domestici got one kill. Wow. Uh, looks like we're going to have a charge into the Palatina Guards. These guys are going to take massive casualties on the charge. Another charge here by the Noble Step Cataphracts onto the Protectoris Domestici. Getting a lot of kills as well. Looks like 74. These guys were just... And they were unable to get... Okay, they got two kills as the Cataphracts pulled back, but definitely a very cost-effective trade there for the Hunts. And, I mean, this is just not looking good at all for the East Romans. And another charge by these Cataphracts, destroying the Protectoris Domestici. Actually, the Heterea Guards this time around. And this game is just uh, very, very one-sided at this point. And these Step Cataphracts should do very well against these units but yeah it looks like GG is called and the concession of defeat by Panda Warrior but again Huns are I would say favored against Eastern Romans but clearly Orgedrix outplayed Panda Warrior in this game as you can see 
look at the cataphract kills by our Jerix. Very, very nice. And also with the Step Warlord. Uh, the Ur Warriors didn't do much, but that's really because they didn't have time. Okay, they killed some cavalry units in the beginning, especially was important. Again, the skirmishers were didn't really do anything for both sides. They just cancelled each other out. And the boss ranger just came in and did a bit of work, and that was it. As for the East Romans, well, I don't I don't think any unit actually got cost effective, but actually I missed this Equites Sagittari, but I think what it did is that it killed an Ur Warrior and also did more damage, so uh, that unit I suppose got cost effective, but other than that, I don't really know. None of these Haterias got the kills that were necessary, maybe the Scully Palatine, not sure. But yeah, that is uh, game 1, currently 104 or Orchedrix, see you in game 2. This is the second game between uh, Panda Warrior and Orchedrix. Uh, let's see how this one goes. Uh, this time around we have uh, Orchedrix playing as the Eastern Romans and uh, Panda Warrior playing as the Langobards. So, uh, we'll see how this one goes. I mean, Langobards have the... well, I'm gonna go over the builds. Once we load in, not just not gonna go over them right now because obviously I won't have the time to go over the builds while we're loading. It should be an interesting match for sure. I mean, the first one was uh, clearly in Orchidrix's favor, but Panda Warrior can can come back from a deficit, but that was a little bit, uh, yeah, that was quite the the close, uh, uh, not close, but quite the decisive victory in the first game. So we'll see how the second one goes. Uh, I'm gonna go over the build of the Eastern Romans here. Let's see. We have the Bronze 1 Comest General. Interesting that we don't have Magister Militum. Uh, then we have, in terms of cavalry, well, we have a bunch of Equites Promoti. Looks like four in total. Bronze 1. Then Tugmata Cavalry over here in the center. Uh, quite an interesting choice that we don't see more Tugmatas on the field, but instead uh, Orgenerix opted for the Equitas, more Equitas Promoti. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, four Equitas, Bronze 1, a Tugmata Cav, Vanilla, and then this Comes Bronze 1. That's the Cavalry Contingent. Then we have up front four Fundi Taurus, and let's see, a Balistari all the way in the back. Very interesting choice. Can do a lot of damage. In the late game. We also have two Hateria guards on each flank it seems and center composed of four Protectoris Domestici so definitely a very decent Roman lineup here. I quite like it. East Roman that is uh, because uh, this build cannot be taken by Western Romans because they don't have Hateria guards and they do not have Tagmata. Something that uh, yeah, they really lack offensive tools, the West Romans. But East Romans do have the Haterias, which makes them more powerful, much more powerful than they otherwise would be. And that is why the West Romans are possibly the worst faction in the game, or at least uh, on par with the Celts in terms of how bad they are. <laughs> anyway, we have the Goddens Warlord here for the Langobards, Bronze 2 with Fast Charge. Then on each flank looks like two Noble Germanic Horsemen with the Germanic Lancer. It looks like... What do we have in the center? Looks like... Okay, three... No, two Langobard Clubmen. Then on the flanks of those, two Godans Men over here. A Godans Men with a Godans Chosen Bronze 1 on the left. Let's see. Skirmishes. Just three Germanic Bows. Interesting choice. Not Germanic Archers and a Germanic Crossbowman. We also have two Horse Hewers over here. And... Uh, that is basically it for uh, the Langobards. So let's just hit play and watch this battle unfold, as usual. So the skirmishing, I mean, it's gonna go pretty poorly for, uh, I mean, not pretty poorly, but nobody's gonna really get the advantage here again because it's just the uh, Germanic bows against uh, Fundi Taurus, really. But there's this Germanic crossbowman over here which I'm not quite sure why it's actually pushing up that far. Okay, it's pulling back, which is a good choice. Three Germanic bows against Funditores. Well, Funditores are going to destroy these Germanic bows, that is for certain, because they did get in to the fray first. Uh, now the Funditores are pushing up a bit too far, though, I feel. They should be targeting 
other units now. Otherwise, they're, if they get charged, I mean, they could get charged by these Germanic Lancers and Noble Germanic Horsemen. But pulled back nicely, though. Now the Precision Shot is going to wear off on the Funditoris. It's not going to be good for them. Again, no loose formation either on the Funditoris. So they're not... I mean, they're going to not be able to absorb as absorb as much damage. Uh, these Germanic Crossmen, I don't know why they keep moving up like that. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, they lost nothing so far, but it is a bit risky to move up. Like, I guess it's bait, but still. Uh, so it looks like these Germanic bows getting shot at. Uh, the skirmish engagement, I suppose you could say going better for the Romans, but I mean, still losing a lot of ammo here. So I don't know. But it is four Funditoris against three Germanic bows, and the Germanic bows far cheaper than four Funditoris. I mean, I, I think yeah, the Germanic bows are 100. They are much cheaper than the Funditoris. As you can see here, the Funditoris are also going to be taking damage to the Germanic bows. I mean, this trait is good for the Langvards. Germanic bows for Funditoris. Take that any day, I guess. Uh, these Germanic lancers now are starting to get targeted, and they're going to be taking some damage. Uh, from these Funitoris because as you can see well, let's look at them poor missile block chance 28 armor so as you can see they're actually taking a significant amount of damage you're down to 54 already But the Funitoris I and mean, they have 50 missile damage, but still as you can see here This is fairly important. Look at them go down to 45 That is a lot of losses on the Funitoris Looks like now the Germanic crossbow will get targeted though, and it's gonna start losing men. Though now they're also firing into the Funitoris, and the Funitoris will lose to the Germanic crossbowmen, especially because they're up on this hill. But the thing is, is this a cost-effective engagement for uh, for the Langbards? Because losing Germanic crossbowmen, that unit is far more expensive than these Funitoris. Uh, let's actually fast forward because, as you can see, nothing is really going on in this battle. Or is there? Okay, Germanic Crossmen now getting focused. But as you can see, these Germanic Crossmen not getting a lot of kills and now getting focused by these Funditoris. Taking a lot of damage. As you can see, this Germanic Lancer down to 44. And none of no damage done to, to these Noble Germanics, but you can see the Horse Hewers and Godensmen losing a couple of men. Here we have, of course, Funditoris dying to Godensmen. Germanic Ghosts coming back. Oh, this Polystar is a bit far forward. The Germanic Lancers trying to go for them. But, yeah, obviously it would have been... They would have gone too far forward if they wanted to go in there. So, the Germanic Lancers did not commit. Here, though, we're going to see a charge by these Noble Germanic Horsemen to get rid of these Funditoris. It should be easy and even one charge. Now they should pull out. They should pull out because otherwise they're going to get charged. And, oh, looks like they're going to get charged by the Equitus Promoni. So this is not bad for uh, for the East Romans. However, they are fighting uphill. That is something that deserves to be mentioned. And Horse Sewers coming in first. So the infantry support went in first for the Langobars. These clubmen are going to stop all these units from pushing forward, it seems. Uh, so now these Funditoris coming through. The Germanic Lancers trying to charge the center? No. Okay, so this Germanic Lancer coming around for the East Romans, uh, for the Langobards, going to go straight into the Tugmata. It's not really going to do much to the Tugmata, and the Germanic Lancer is going to die. It's not going to take long either, as it's just a Germanic Lancer. Here we see the Gonansmen coming into the fight as well. Uh, these Equus Promoti pulling out of the fight, so they're going to lose some men, but they're going to be alright because uh, they have the Hateria guards there killing the cavalry of the Langobards. And now these Hateria's, they're going to kill all these units over here because Hateria's, yeah, they are insane. Though they are fighting uphill, so it's not the best for them, they should still be able to break through here. Oh, free charge onto these Germanic Lancers. Oh, actually, the Germanic Lancers lost moment counter charge so at least there's gonna be some damage done to these Equus Promoti a lot of damage actually by the Germanic Lancers lots of kills onto the Equus Promoti wow uh, but here though we, these Germanic crossmen might get charged and it's not gonna be good for the Langobards this cavalry needs to be sent to support the there uh, this noble Germanic horseman I don't know why the noble Germanic horsemen were not pulled out here because horse viewers were there maybe because it's uh, hit the rear guards uh, let's see, these Gunnersmen moving in, but the crossbowmen getting 
engaged now this noble germanic horseman should have been sent in ages ago now this means that the germanic crossman could potentially die here so this is not good for the langobards and now this uh, noble germanic horseman showing its rear and getting shot as well over here on the left the langobard clubman holding in shield wall but not really getting kills against the ectus promoti here an ectus promoti charging the goddess men should do a lot of damage to those goddess men a uh, huge melee blob here by the East Romans. Uh, I don't know about this, honestly. <laughs> uh, that's like three units on just a single pro uh, God Huntsman. I mean, it's gonna kill the God Huntsman, but still. This feels like too many units on one unit. Uh, this charge means that this Equitas Promoti is gonna go down, but not before doing a lot of damage to all these three units. Germanic Lancers here going to beat the Ectus Promoti. Lots of kills by these Germanic Lancers. Now they're gonna get a charge into this Ectus Promoti. So another charge by them. These Noble Germanic Horsemen, I mean, and Godensmen. The Godensmen are doing weird things as you can see here. But in the main melee fight, as you can see, the Godensmen and Horse Hewers getting grinded down by the Hateria Guards. Even though the Hateria is fighting uphill, they're still uh, doing a better job. Oh, this Noble Germanic Horseman making it through the center over here. It's gonna get into the Balistari. We have some Godans men still on the field. They're gonna go for the Cavalry of the Eastern Romans. Oh, the Cavalry of the Eastern Romans is now stationary, so it's gonna take a lot of damage if it tries to pull out now. East Hateria is still on the field. Oh, a nice back charge by the Comets General into the Noble Germanic Horseman should get them off the field. And this Noble Germanic Horseman charge, let's see how many kills it ha it's going to get. It's at 102 at the moment. Uh, if it kills a couple of Hatereas, it's going to pay for itself. Wow, it doesn't kill a couple of Hatereas. It kills a lot of Hatereas for how many, for how little, they, how few of them there are. So it looks like Balistari against Germanic Crosswoman engagement. Uh, we'll see who wins that one, but quick reload. So definitely Balistari going to win that one, especially as there are more. Here we see the the Godans Warlord engaging into the fray here. It's gonna just kill all those Protectores Domestici. Even though it's up against two units. I mean, it's a Godans Warlord. It's definitely gonna do well. We should see Frenzy pop soon though, as the unit is very tired. Godans men over here running out of control and not going the correct way. So that is unfortunate for uh, the Langobards. Now we see these horse hewers chasing these uh, Balistari. He does not want to let these Balistari finish off his uh, finish off his units in the late game. So these Hateria is going to get a nice recharge onto the clubmen and Godans chosen. Even though there's a couple of Hatereas, this flank should still be lost by the Langobards. And now we have these Protectores Domestici. Brace was enabled and the Noble Germanic Horsemen for for the Langobards it are now off the field. Uh, this gun has been coming in and it's probably going to rear charge all these Hatereas and oh look at all these units routing for the East Romans. This is huge right here and these clubmen are now fine. But we're going to see a charge by the comments general. Looks like okay yeah the charge is happening. It should do a lot of damage to these units. Uh, gun has been still looks like they came back and again horse stewards chasing off the Polystari. Very well done. Nice Comets General charge here. It got so many kills right now. And if the Comets General is used well here, this is definitely going to be a win for uh, these Romans, I feel. So let's see. The Gunnismen actually beating those uh, Hatereas because there's just a couple of Hatereas left. And now Protectoris Domestici going to get mown down by Gunnis Chosen. Looks like they're out of the field. This is very, very close. And now these units are going to pull out of the fight. And by pulling out, these units are routing. I don't know why they were being pulled out. Ooh, that is huge. Now that we're going to have a rear charge onto the Godansmen here. The Godansmen turn back, but a little bit too late. And activate Frenzy, which is good. But Comets General going to disengage. But as it disengages, look at how many men were lost. Comets General losing a lot of men to that Godansmen. And now this... This Godans Warlord is out of control, but it is going to make sure that these guys get shattered, I suppose. These Godans Chosen going to destroy a couple of Protectoros Domestici. Okay, they may not win, but they're Berserk, so they could actually just win by routing. Uh, the Godans Warlord getting charged by Comets General, but this isn't good for the Comets, because it's going to lose a lot of men. Even though, actually, that charge did a lot of work, and the Godans Warlord did not kill too much, so... Yeah, and the Godans Warlord is Berserk, which is very important as well. So it cannot be controlled. 
The Bali Star is also on the field right now. The Bali Star here is gonna be shooting all these Ghanans, man. I think this should be the game for the Eastern Romans. Yeah, this should be Eastern Roman game. Oh, these Ghanans been pulling back. They're now gonna get shot. So let's see more shots by the Bali Stari. They're gonna get ready. They're gonna start firing again. Reloading and firing soon. This unit's gonna die. It's definitely gonna die here. Oh, but the units for the East Romans wavering, wavering. Oh, they routed. Ballistar routed and the East Roman general routed. I mean, this game. Wow. I mean, this game would have definitely been won by the East Roman side. His units not routed, but very, very close. Let's look at the stats. Combat's general, 235 kills. The four Equitas Brody, lots of damage. Well, actually, mm, not that much damage, but the Tagmar, 123 kills. Proctorus Domestici, not a lot done because, I mean, they were up against Godin's men and stuff. So, yeah, and the Godin's warlord. Haterias, though, the damage they did was insane. Uh, Bali Stari, not a lot of work done for the crossbows. Uh, I mean, the crossbows didn't do much on either side, it seems. But wow, that Godans Warlord and the Godans men really pulled their weight in. And the Langobard Clubman with 129 kills. That is pretty amazing to see. But yeah, that is game two. So we shall see how game three actually goes. 1-1 uh, score between these uh, two fantastic players. That is going to be the tiebreaker next game. This is the third game between uh, Panda Warrior and Orgedrix. Uh This is going to be very, very fun to see who actually ends up taking this, uh, this tournament, the final of this tournament, as we go over both uh, players' builds. But something interesting to note. Well. Let's put it in slow motion first. So let's look at the Jutes. Orgetrix is playing as the Jutes here. And uh, yeah, he's going to have a strong army. <laughs> to say the least, let's look at it. We have the Nordic Warlord General with Brace. Then we have, looks like, two Nordic Horse Lords on the left, Bronze 1. Two Nordic Horse Lords on the right, Bronze 1. And then, looks like a Royal Huskarl with Huskarl on each flank. Then in the center, two Huskarls. So that's essentially six very strong axes. But two Nordic Horse Raiders in the center, one bronze one. So let's see. Two Thrall Skirmishers as well. In the center, we have this Nordic Spearman. We also have four Nordic Hurlers up front in total. So uh, that is the Jutes build. The thing about this term is that there's only four heavy cap allowed. And uh, the Jutes, without. Nordic Horse Lords, they have to bring two fairly crappy cavalry units, and it's these two Nordic Horse Raiders, apparently. I mean, look at how bad they are. First of all, they are light. Look at their armor, look at their health. The stats are not great. Okay, melee attack, melee damage, charge bonus is quite okay, but just that armor and health is just terrible. And again, it is they are light units. That's probably the most important thing. Anyway, let's go over the Sassanid build of um, of Panda Warrior here. He has the Savaran Sardar General with a fast charge. We see two Pushtigban Cataphracts on the left with a Persian Mounted Bowman. Two Pushtigban Cataphracts on the right with a Persian... Uh, with a Zayadan Immortal Cavalry, actually. This unit is extremely strong, even in melee. Now in the center, supporting the General, we see a Savaran Cataphract. Up front, we have just four Persian hurlers, so not the Armenian slingers this time around, because they are fairly expensive. So it's not like, oh, bring Armenian slingers every time. It's not like that. In terms of the infantry contingent, well, we have four Dilemite warriors. Make that, okay, four Dilemite warriors, a Sogdian warrior, an elite immortal bronze one on the right. That's going to be interesting. That unit is very tanky. Let's look at the stats. 77 armor, wow, 115 health, and on top of that, headhunt, or unbreakable as I guess it's called, and square, so it's just, well, square I guess is not really going to be used, but 
still. <laughs> uh, and it's also disciplined, so um, an expert charge defense. So this unit is just very tanky. It's going to take long to kill. Very long to kill, actually. But just if you look at the melee stats, clearly it's still going to lose to Huskarls. No problem at all. But it's just going to keep them busy for a while. Now let's watch this game and uh, I quite think that, yeah, what, um, I think that what Panda is doing right here with the Sassanids is a bit risky, just putting almost all his cavalry on the flanks and keeping only his general in the center with the Sovereign Cataphract. I think this is a little bit risky because if he gets charged in the center, like a full yellow charge, he might be in a lot of trouble here, but we'll see. He still has his uh, uh, cavalry kind of close to his melee lines, and I mean, it's gonna take uh, some time to break through these hurlers and get into the Dalamites. So it's still, I mean, of course, that is still a ris risk uh, that the Chutes have to take. But the longer they wait, the more these uh, Zayden Immortal Cavalry and the Persian Mounted Bowmen are going to skirmish. Because that is an important thing. The Sassanids have more cavalry right now. And looks like the yeah the skirmish engagement is starting again. Persian hurlers against the Nordic hurlers. If you look at stats, 13 armor, 78 health, 8 armor, and 80 health. So they're fairly similar. Like it's just they're just gonna both uh, do pretty. They're just gonna cancel each other out as usual. But these Persian Hunters in loose formation just to make sure that they don't die as fast. But right now they're actually dying fairly quickly. Can, uh, I mean, if you take into account that. Oh, okay, they're actually not firing at all. So uh, this could be quite smart because if you don't fire at all, this means you have some missiles left that you can use uh, to destroy. I mean, not destroy, but slow down your enemies, uh, cavalry units, and infantry. So that is important. As you can see, these Persian hurlers, hurlers still alive. Whereas the Nordic hurlers, they have wa wasted almost all of their ammunition. And because they have wasted almost all of their ammunition, they're not going to be able to do much. But the Jutes, I mean, the, this is still an okay th trade, I suppose. If the Nordic hurlers... Actually, it's not an okay trade at all, but... Now the, the Nordic Hurlers have to have their fire at will off and only start firing uh, when engagements happen because they are very useful when engagements happen just because they lower the speed of units and that is massive. Uh, well, maybe not massive, but it's very important. Persian Hurlers still getting shot at, so again, I think this is a mistake by the Jutes here targeting these loose formation Persian Hurlers. He's not going to kill them, as you can see. He's taking so long. Persian Hurler is still on full ammo, so uh, this is very good. This is very good for assassins, in my opinion, anyway. Yeah, ammunition of these two is gone, ammunition of this unit is gone, and ammunition of this unit is also about to be gone. And now we're going to see a Sovereign Cataphract charge into these Slingers. Okay, looks like not, but at this point, uh, the assassins can be like, okay, I'm just going to move up, I don't care because your Nordic, Nordic Hurlers do not have any ammo. And as you can see, uh, assassins are being quite defensive on the right side and they're gonna go in on the left here with these Dalamites. They're gonna go into these uh, Nordic Hurlers and the Nordic Spearmen. Uh, these Dalamite Warriors are in Shield Wall though, but the Shield Wall is not so strong and now they're gonna pull back, which means they're not gonna be in Braced formation. Uh, but Braced, these guys are just gonna kill off these Hurlers like it's no problem. So Varn Cataphracts maybe won't get a charge here. These Dalamites doing weird things. They have to pull back because the Huskals are going to engage them here. Uh, the Sovereign Cataphract gonna actually get a charge off onto the Horse Lords. Uh, just maybe not the best charge, but still a good charge because uh, the Hurlers were actually pretty dense. So as you can see, it's getting some kills on uh, those units. Uh, these De Sogdian Warriors, not quite sure what they're doing, and all these cavalry units are a bit far away for the Sassanids. As you can see, the Sassanids is just rushing forward. Pushtigvan here going to destroy the Nordic Hurlers in one single charge. Just look at the Nordic Hurlers just absolutely getting destroyed by the Pushtigvan charge. Pushtigvans need to be careful now though. And this rear charge by the Nordic Horse Raiders is going to do a lot of work into these Dalamites. So this engagement is going to be lost for the Sassanids. I don't see them winning that engagement. But here, 
this is very good. This push when cataphract charge, connecting with more units. Now we have the Dalamites following up. We have the Dalamite warriors here pulling back. But this again was a huge this is a huge problem for uh, the Sassanids. This charge though very nice into the Nordic Horse the Raiders. Uh, should pull out. Okay, not gonna pull out, so this unit's going to probably end up dying. But now we see the extra cap coming into play for the Sassanids, getting to the skirmishers. Here the Sauron Sardar General going to engage the Nordic uh, Nordic Horse Raiders. Horse Lords rather, so it's gonna take a lot of damage then. These Dynamites throwing their jabs at these Nordic Horse Lords, but but I mean the the Jutes are being pulled every which way. And now we the flanks of the Jutes are going to go down. And look at this Pushtigwen Cataphract. Okay, not being too cost effective. Looks like 156 skills, but they just killed the hurler, so not super effective. But holding down like what five units here in place for the other engagements to finish up and go well for. Uh, for the Sassanids basically because look this flank is mopped up this flank is mopped up so right now uh, the Sassanids are truly doing a great job in this game uh, just holding with like a couple of cav units and then de dealing with the rest this scav charge is going to do a lot of work uh, damage to these royal huskarls more of these Persian mounted bowmen coming in 55 kills let's see how many kills they're gonna get on the charge with these units as they are not braced Wow, look at the kills just go up for the Persian Mounted Bowmen. Definitely doing well here. And not only that, but they're kind of stopping these units too. So that's very good. Of course, they're not going to get any further kills, but the impact damage is uh, just insane. Even on regular units, it still does a lot of damage. These Royal Huskarls here going to get flanked by Elite Immortals, and the Elite Immortals are going to kill the Huskarls from behind. These Elite Immortals, truly elite. And the Horse Lords are going to die to them as well. And I mean, it looks like the Jutes have a lot of units right now, right? But these Push Digbans and these Dalamites are going to do fairly well here. You can see the Horse Lords trying to go around and support this engagement. But, I mean, just so many cavalry units left on the field for the Sassanids. And we're going to see another Cav charge by the Sassanids into this Huskal. Going to drop down the Huskals tremendously here. Just look at this unit getting absolutely destroyed. Another Persian uh, Zaydan Immortal Cavalry charge actually incoming. So these guys, not only are they going to have great impact damage, but then they are going to have some staying power as well as they have some decent melee stats and a lot of armor. So, But they're still going to pull out, it seems. And right now, they're going to go in melee against these Nordic Horse Raiders. Clearly, they're going to destroy the Nordic Horse Raiders as there's only a couple of them. Uh, this Sovereign Sardar General destroying the Horse Lords, and as we can see, these Huskals are going to start dropping momentarily to even Persian Hurlers. More cap charges from the Pushtigvans. These Dalamites doing extremely well here, mopping up the rest. Uh, but yeah, the cavalry for the Sassanids has done well here, as you would expect, right? It has to do well in order for the Sassanids to win against the Jutes. Just all the cap charges on the Huskals, but still some Huskals on the field. And uh, quite the number actually, it looks like 74 here, 85 here, and Nordic Warlord is still alive. So it's still not 100% over, but as long as these uh, cav units just get some good charges onto the Huskals, it's just going to go really, really well here. So let's see, uh, the final moments, uh, these Huskals get charged in the rear by all the cataphracts, and now it should just be a chain route that it is. Very good game, uh, and uh, yeah, quite uh, quite liked the way Panda Warrior played this one out as the Sassanids. Look at the kills on those Pshtigmans, wow, Elamites doing okay, and the Persian Hurlers. Yeah, I mean, it looks like the Nordic Hurlers got some kills, but as, as I was saying, it's not cost effective. Persian Hurlers uh, still had ammo after, so they're more useful. Wow, the Zaydan Mortal Cavalry, 246 skills and 127 for the Persian Mount Bowman. Very nice. But yeah, that is game and match. So hope you all enjoyed. If you want to see more, don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Google+. Share the video and I shall see you next time.